All right, good morning. I'm gonna ask you to please rise and stand at that position of attention. I'm gonna ask the VFW Chaplain Herbert Townsend to come forward and give the uh, opening September 11th prayer. Uncover. First of all, I'd like to start by saying good morning to everyone. Thankful and glad to see everyone show up for this somewhat solemn occasion. We're glad to see you all. I would also like to take this moment to give tribute and celebration to all of our wonderful police, firemen, military, and first responders. Without you, we would not have survived some of the events in the past that have been caused a lot of casualties to this nation. First responders, police, and military, and fire folks have, have been instrumental in helping to keep this nation together, and I don't know whether you get the due appreciation and respect that you deserve. I personally thank you and salute you. We remember God of history and remembrance. We remember when the towers fell and the lives were lost. We remember the dust and the smoke, the despair and the grief. We remember that sense of vulnerability and shock. We remember the numbness that overwhelmed us as we watched our screens for hours and hours, waiting for an explanation and understanding that never came. We remember God of hope and presence. We remember the heroes, those who rushed to help, who guided the wounded down innumerable flights of stairs, who rose to overwhelm those who held death in their hands. We remember the hours and the days of binding wounds and healing hurts, giving comfort, drying tears. We remember words of support and compassion from nations far and wide. We see the ripples of that tragic day continue to impact our world 20 years later. We grieve with allies today as our allies grieved with us those many years ago. And together we wonder if there will ever be an end to violence, to war, to hatred, to death. We grieve our world's inability to learn the things that led to peace. We call to you now in our remembrance, God of justice and peace, Give us a will to truly pray that your kingdom may come on earth as it is in heaven. On this day of solemn remembrance, may we honor the lives that were lost in this tragic act. May we give thanks for those who served and saved, rendered and rendered aid and assistance. May we give comfort to those who, whose lives live with loss. May we seek justice and peace where it is within our ability and rely on you when ability escapes us. On this day of solemn remembrance, may we build what has been torn down. May we mend what has been broken. May we live your love when hate seems to reign. May we bear witness to the cause of peace. Amen. Please remain standing and face the flag for the Pledge of Allegiance of the United States of America. Present. Arms! I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order! Arms! <clears throat> you may be seated. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Christopher DiTullio. I'm the commander of the Nashua VFW Post 483, and I want to welcome you to the 9-11 Remembered Summer Money. Um, I want to take this moment to welcome a distinguished guest, the City of Nashua Mayor, Mayor Jim Donches. Thank you for being here today, Mr. Mayor. And the uh, Nashua Fire and Rescue Chief of Department, Steve Buxton, as well as the Nashua Police Department Chief, Kevin Roy. Thank you members of the National Fire and Rescue and Police Department, members of the American Legion, VFW and DAV, and the citizens of Nashville, thank you for being here today.
Where were you on 9-11? It's a question so many of us have repeated over the last two decades. It's a way we relate to one another as we reflect on the day of one of the most horrific attacks on the American people in U.S. history, September 11th, 2001. For the veterans of foreign wars, we join the rest of this country today in remembering and honoring the lives of so many that were tragically taken from us during this terroristic event that took place in New York City, Washington, D.C., and Shanksville, Pennsylvania 23 years ago. Every generation seems to have their own day in history that has impacted them in such a way that we remember where we were, what were we doing, and how we heard the news. Tra tragic events like the attack on Pearl Harbor, the assassinations of President John F. Kennedy and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. were mournful memories etched in everyone's minds at this time. However, the attacks of September 11, 2001 were unlike anything ever seen before in the first time in history. Death and destruction on a massive scale were actually televised and updated in real time. Brief story about myself. Um, I was 18 years old. I left my home for the first time, joined the United States Army. And on September 11, 2001, I was in Fort Leonardwood, Missouri, learning to be and training to be an American soldier and a military police officer. That day, we were supposed to have a Class A inspection, and most of us that served understand that drill sergeants always would make us wait. I was there 10 weeks when this happened. It was the first day I got to watch television in 10 weeks, and I got to watch the, the towers fall. Nothing in that moment made my, my commitment to being a, a citizen of this great country more powerful and definitely wanted to be, go out there and make a difference. And not only that, to serve my community when I got back and become a police officer. It was 8.46 a.m. that Tuesday morning when the first plane struck the North Tower. At 10.28 a.m., the North Tower collapsed. That's 102 minutes. 19 hijackers would succeed in taking the lives of 2,977 Americans, terrorizing the entire country and the entire world as they watched live in horror. Of those casualties, 343 were firemen and 72 were law enforcement officers. Since then, 23 years ago, sadly, there's been almost that exact same number, probably more than the last statistics were made, that have died as a result of diseases and cancer working during the rubble and trying to free and save as many Americans as they can. Yet, in the middle of this unimaginable tragedy, Stories of unbelievable heroism were being reported from every location. Firefighters, law enforcement officers running to the burning World Trade Center buildings, rescuing hundreds of people, servicemen leaving others through burning, smoldering Pentagon rubble to safety. Passengers of Flight 93 who fought back against their hijackers to prevent them from reaching their intended target. These selfless acts of sacrifice will come to the define that day as much, if not more, than the attacks themselves. Our world looks much different today. The wars that came after 9-11 are gone, and they're over, but the fight against terrorism remains. These men and women entering service weren't even alive 23 years ago. But for those of us who were wore the uniform and decided to join the military because of these attacks, nothing has strengthened our resolve to support and defend our Constitution our nation, and our way of life more than ever before than 9-11. Like the rest of our fellow Americans, the events that change us forever. This Patriot Day, we encourage every American to pause and honor the victims, reflect on extraordinary courage of first responders and extraordinary citizens alike, pay tribute to those who took the, flight, the fight to the enemy and sacrificed and protected and defend our freedom and never let September 11th, 2001, fade from our memory. Remember, always. I will now ask the city of Nashville Mayor, Mayor Jim Donchus to come and say a few words. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Chris. Well, I'm here with Alderwoman Trish Klee, representing the city of Nashua on this 
solemn occasion. And you've heard from Chris, of course, of the events of 9-11, uh, 2001. We all remember, and I remember, where we were when we first heard and began to see uh, on TV what was happening down in New York City, first at Tower Number 1 and then Tower Number 2. I was listening to Mike Barnacle this morning, and he reminded me and everyone who was listening of an iconic photograph of a ladder truck from Brooklyn crossing the Brooklyn Bridge on the way to the World Trade Center. And in the same photograph, you can see that there's a tremendous fire and at, the, at Tower One. And the firefighters in the photograph are, of course, looking towards it and gripping the truck as they sped towards this tragedy. And they had to know, looking at what was happening, that this was no typical call. This was beyond anything that they'd ever seen or experienced. But did they turn around? Did they in any way shirk their duty? No, they did not. They and hundreds of other firefighters and police officers rushed to the scene knowing that they could face injury or death. And in fact, as you've heard from Chris, 343 brave firefighters and 72 brave police officers lost their lives along with thousands of other people uh, in responding to that tragedy for New York City and our nation that we are still recovering from. And the, just the magnitude of the loss, I remember thinking back to the Worcester situation where six firefighters died in 1999 uh, responding to a warehouse fire and attempting to save people that they believed were in the warehouse. And six firefighters died. And I remember being on the West Coast and there was a guy from Worcester with a t-shirt commemorating that loss. And at the time, it seemed like a, just a huge monumental loss, six firefighters in one day. But then, uh, a short a year and plus later, we had 9-11, and many, many more first responders died in a much, much bigger tragedy. So I want to thank our own firefighters and police officers for everything you do for the city, for putting your lives on the line for the citizens of Nashua. We are having a commemoration which the fire department annually holds at uh, the Firefighters Memorial up on Concord Street on October 6th where we commemorate and remember the firefighters from Nashua who have like those in New York, who have died in the line of duty. So I want to thank our, uh, our, our first responders on behalf of the city and our citizens. But I think we need to look at the fact that we did not, we as a nation, we as a nation, did not give up, did not walk away or become discouraged as a result of the terrible losses of that day. I remember going to the site of the, the World Trade Center of two or three months after the attack, and there was the rubble had been cleared away, but there was a big, big hole uh, in the ground, and it was all surrounded by fencing, and it was a very, very dismal, dark scene. But uh, New York City, the nation fought back, both in the conflicts that uh, Chris has already mentioned uh, overseas, but also in New York City by building the 9-11 Memorial and Museum and the Freedom Tower. 
And the nation, I believe, is stronger than ever. Uh, we are a nation on the ascent, not a nation in decline. And I believe that the, our countries and our peoples, our military's response to 9-11 uh, proves that fact. Anyway, I want to thank the Veterans Committee, Lou Chipola, Chris, and everybody involved for organizing this event, which I believe will become now an annual event. I want to thank you for your invitation. Again, thanks to our first responders for your bravery and your service. And um, I just, uh, it's just, it's a sad day, but a day that reminds us how strong our country really is. Thank you. If you're able to, please rise and stand to position of attention. I'm going to ask Chief Steve Buxton to come forward and help me present the wreath to the monument. Please face the flag. Present arms. Firing detail. Perform your duties. Carry colors. 